Hi, everybody. Um, it's Sarah here. I haven't uh, recorded anything in a really long time. Um, it's been a little while. Um, a little update. I did have my third Sabrine infusion, and I didn't have any um, side effects from it at all this time. I had none. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, that's just uh, a little bit about uh, one, the flu uh, vaccine, the H1N1, the regular seasonal flu, and this new information on vascular um, deformities in people that have MS. Um, gosh, where to start? It's an exciting time, and if you're going to have a disease, I mean, maybe this is the one to have because there's so much work going on in it. <laughs> Cairo is trying to talk as well. Um, I had both of my vaccines, the H1N1 and the seasonal flu. Um, I have had mixed feelings about vaccines in the past simply because vaccines um, stimulate your immune systems. You know, your body builds up a little army against whatever is injected into you. Um, which stimulates your immune system to build an army so that your body's ready in case um, it faces the real enemy and it's able to fight without you getting sick. I'd always kind of avoided it because I didn't want anything to stimulate my immune system because I figured maybe I would end up in trouble. It stimulated, it stirred around, and then it would attack me more. Um, this time, I decided to go ahead and get both of them um, simply because I am asthmatic, and MS people tend to be prone to pneumonias and chest infections for whatever reason we are. Um, and I wanted to let you know a little bit, you know, about the vaccines. Not, you know, it's a personal choice that you have to make, and I'd ask your neurologist. Um, but you can't get the flu from having a flu vaccine because all they're putting into you basically is a protein or a little marker on the outside of the viral cell. So they're not giving you the entire virus. They're not giving you all of the guts of the virus um, so that the cells that they inject into you have the ability to make you sick. They don't. They're basically giving you the envelope or the outer covering of the virus so that your body can recognize the protein on the surface so that when your own antibodies are circulating, your body can recognize that foreign protein as foreign and attack the infection right away. So that's what the vaccines are. And I decided um, to go ahead with the vaccines. And again, my only concern was the stimulation of my immune system. And I wondered whether that was a good thing or not. Um, but I went ahead because I think the fear for me of actually getting sick, uh, you know, I, I just weighed the benefits and risks for myself. So I would think about it yourself, um, how your immune system might be stimulated if you got H1N1 and how sick you might be, um, and how that might affect your MS. So there were lots of things to think about, but I did go for both of them. My attack is um, not resolving as I would like it to. Um, when I'm really tired, um, I, my speech goes really funny. Um, my ability to swallow is affected, and I'm so exhausted, I, I can sort of do one task a day at this point, um, getting up. I still have help, you know, with showers and things inside the home for now, and hopefully that will change, but for now I'm not recovering at the rate I'd like to, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. It's partly why I haven't recorded in. Um, as for the new research done in Italy um, by Dr. Ferrara, uh, how exciting is that? Um, he is um, saying that in 100% of MS patients, he's examined the veins um, draining the brain and spinal cord and sometimes the chest in here. Um, the veins are stenosed and the blood flow is limited. And for people that don't understand what that means, um, there's two uh, plumbing systems sort of in the body. The arteries draw the blood away from the heart to the brain and to all the other areas of your body. And the veins are the neutral vessels that return the blood to the heart. Um, arteries um, contract and they have muscular edges. Veins are kind of sedate, but they've got little valves in them to stop the flow of blood from going backwards. 
Um, nobody really pays attention to veins unless you've got varicose veins, those big puffy veins that stick out in your legs, you know. And in that circumstance, um, you know, people have operations for varicose veins. But to date, you know, they don't really look at veins. If they do a Doppler ultrasound of your neck, they're going to look at the arteries. They really don't look at veins very much. Um, so for this doctor to have looked at veins and found that there's a problem with the drainage, which will help explain why all MS people have iron deposits in their brain, because the blood pools and the iron is heavy. It's a very heavy molecule when it settles, and we have it settling in our brain. Um, when he talks about stenosis, what he means basically is that you have a garden hose and it's being squeezed. So the lumen or the space inside the garden hose, instead of being, where am I? Instead of being here, is like this. So the blood that's draining from your brain and spinal cord is very slow in leaving and you're pooling all this iron. And the iron, iron itself on its own is really, really toxic. Um, it causes cell death and inflammation and maybe that's the inflammatory stimulus to our immune systems coming in and attacking that area. So that's pretty exciting research. Um, I've done some thinking, and this again is a personal um, personal decision and not something anybody should follow, but um, I'm going to double check with my physician to ensure that it's all right, but I'm going to start taking the low-dose aspirin that they use for heart disease patients to cause a little bit of blood thinning because um, if you can imagine your blood sort of being thick and trying to go through a really small space, if your blood were a little bit thinner, it might have an easier time draining. So I'm actually going to just make sure, and everybody out there, make sure it's okay with your doctor and all the medicines that you're on, but I'm going to make sure it's okay for me. And just from my medical background, um, I thought, you know, I'm going to ask if I can do that. Um, so I came up with that idea. I think that would be a, a good idea. Um, I don't know how quickly, you know, it shouldn't be. I know that there's going to be a study going on in Buffalo and in Hamilton, Ontario. They're accumulating some MRI reports just to see how frequent this condition is. I kind of think this will be a fast-moving um, fast moving phenomenon. It's not like they've got to do a drug trial for five years to see if the drug works. They just have to test people and see if this is in fact the case um, and how, how long does it take to have a Doppler ultrasound. So I'm really excited about this research, and I think we all should be. We should all be vocal. We should all be asking questions. Um, we should blog about it, talk about it, talk to our doctors about it, talk to our neurologists about it, and don't let the medical and the drug companies in particular bury this because uh, it's too important and pretty pretty amazing. Now, most people that have the surgery where they actually go on up, it's very basic surgery. They put a balloon in. They open up the vein. Um, very simple surgery. A lot of those people that have had that done still stay on to Sabri or other medications at least for a year or two um, just to make sure that everything is okay but the results so far are looking really promising so isn't that nice to wake up on a Saturday and you know the front page of the Globe and Mail was all about this and then W5 for those of you who haven't seen it uh, it's a Canadian news program CTV is the network and W5 is the program had a really long interview with Dr. Ferrari and uh, or Ferrier, anyway, F-E-R-R -R something, it's an Italian name, but it's on there. Um, have a look at that documentary, it's so exciting, and send it to all your friends and everybody who's concerned about your MS. But I'm going to sign out now, and uh, here's hoping that I continue to recover from this attack, um, and maybe from MS altogether, if we can get these veins looked at and maybe have our situations resolved. So. Here's hope for everybody out there, and uh, be vocal, and keep your fingers crossed, and be optimistic, because maybe there's an answer for all of us, and it's it's right there, you know, uh, how exciting is that? So take care, everybody, um, stay well, and uh, think about some of the things I've, I've also been thinking about, your vaccines, whether or not to get them, think about um, asking your doctor about some aspirin, um, ask your doctor about getting the testing done. On your on your veins. It's called the Doppler ultrasound. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.